So uh, let's talk about peace just a little bit um, in that uh, it's so cliche to me. That's the first thing that I think of. You know, you, you, the first thing I think of is, you know, the uh, beauty pageants or whatever, and they used to make fun of all of them, you know, and they ask them what they want, and they say, world peace. Okay, I, I think that's like the standard answer for an American beauty pageant, and I don't know, like it just, there's no depth in that, there's no, there's no truth in that, there's no, and so like world peace comes to mind, we just throw the word peace around so much, and peace of mind, um, I, I found this on the internet, I kind of like wearing my mask in public, then I can talk to myself in peace. <laughs> Okay, is somebody like agreeing with that? I see somebody agreeing. Okay, all right, well, so that's a thing. Yeah, that's a thing, okay. It's a thing, you can just talk to yourself, nobody knows you're talking, okay. So there's some peace in that. Uh, I like this one, no man has done more to bring peace to mankind than the inventor of coffee. So can I get a witness to that? I, uh, I saw this next slide made me laugh. Come on, inner peace, I don't have all day. Uh, I, I feel like that a lot. You know, I feel like that. Like, come on, peace. Like, come on. I just, I want peace. I long for peace. I, uh, I hope for peace. And I think like Nicole talked about, it's so elusive. It's so elusive. And it's like, well, why is that? Because it, I think, you know, I think we think that just like Nicole talked about in her testimony, that she had arrived at peace. She had arrived where she was in a spot in her life where um, peace had finally come. That uh, she had walked through difficult months and that she had grappled with it and gave it to the Lord and did those things and then peace had arrived. And I think that if we're not you know, at peace, we are wanting that. We're grappling for peace. We're striving for peace. We're just waiting for it to come into our lives. And I'm here to tell you that I think the reality is that it doesn't, it doesn't just come like that. It doesn't just come. And, but I wanna start first with talking about uh, what the scripture says about peace. So um, it says in Philippians 4, 6 through 7, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. And so when we look at the scripture, like when we look to scripture, that's truth. No matter what the world tells us, no matter what we talk about, no matter what comes out, if we go to scripture, that's where we can be solid and stand on the truth of it. And so could you bring that scripture back? Sorry. So, uh, so what it says here in scripture is that peace is above, can you go to the second one? That peace is above everything that we might understand. It ascends above all understanding that we have. And when we have the peace, it guards our hearts and minds. So it's worth fighting for. It's worth battling for. It's worth those things. So why do I feel like this? <laughs> That's what I feel like. And, and actually, to be honest, I couldn't really find a picture of what I felt like. This was as close as it got. But I was like, ah, oh, there's so many times where I want peace. And, you know, or even like I'll get up in the morning and I'll pray for, you know, peace or, you know, and it isn't like 30 seconds of my feet hitting the floor and I'm feeling something, right? That's not in any way related to peace. Not in any way. And like things come at us and circumstances come at us and our children come at us and our husband comes at us and work comes at us. And to be honest, when I'm struggling in anxiety and in worry, it has become so comfortable for me, I have to admit this, that I don't even know I'm doing it. And so I don't even, I don't even know, like, it's just part of who I am. Like, I worry from spot to spot to spot to spot. And it looks more in my life like I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to do this in my day. And the reason that I can tell um, is that, like, I'll drive away from work, for example. And it may not have even been, like, a tough day. 
and I'll feel myself breathing, you know, like actually breathing. I breathe through the day, I'm sure, because I'm still alive. But you know when you get in your car and you're like, Whew. right? And I didn't even know I needed to do that. Like, I didn't even know. Like, I'm walking in all of this, and I don't even know the difference. And I was trying to explain that to a friend. You can come on in. You can come on in. You're welcome to. There's plenty of, oh, I scared him away. <laughs> Rat. Um, I, uh, I was trying to explain to a friend, I don't even know I'm being anxious. I don't even know. Like, it's become such a part of my life. It's become such a part of who I am that I don't even realize until I'm someplace kind of by myself a little bit that I'm just like, whew. And, you know, it's energy. It's whatever you want to call it. But I've let it come into my life enough that I, it's comfortable. You know, it's comfortable to me. And I don't, I don't want it. I don't want it anymore. I don't want the anxiety of it. I don't want the worry of it. I don't want to put that on the people that I'm around. I don't want, like, I run around all crazy. I want to feel like this. <laughs> Let's get that girl off the screen. I want to feel like that. <laughs> don't you want to feel like that? Like, just like, oh. Not meditation, but before the Lord, the peace that passes all understanding. I want to carry that with me. I want to take that into work with me. And I want that to be what I give the people around me, not the, ah, oh my gosh. So I'm here to tell you, ladies, that it's a battle. It's a battle. And it's worth fighting for. It's worth it. It's absolutely, absolutely worth it. So, you know, the difference between Nicole battling back for her peace makes all the difference in the world. It makes all the difference. And so it's worth it for all of us to battle. And so I want to tell you uh, the first reason that I, I just know that it's a battle. And so if you could move to the next slide and go. Um, I don't know if you know, and you probably, you're so scholared and way more than me, but it's actually part of the armor of God piece. Do you know that? I love that. Absolutely love it. So if, uh, if you could go to the scripture, that'd be great, Mark. Thank you. Isn't Mark awesome? Can we give Mark a shout out in the back? And we have Aaron and Zach back there. They're amazing. And Josie's back there helping us out. And Hannah. I mean, we, it takes a team. My goodness. So I just want to shout out to them. So um, I did all of the scripture of the armor of God, but could you move, actually? Let's get to the peace part. Um, and... Uh, and so, uh, let's see where, in addition, take up the shield of faith and the helmet of salvation. Do we? Oh, there we go. Right? Yeah. So, it's talking about, um, so, put the truth around your waist and the breastplate of righteousness, which they talk about that stuff all the time, the salvation helmet, but you can miss this little part in the middle, and it says, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. Is that awesome or what? So when we're looking at armor, let's look at armor for a second. It took me um, a little bit to find a girl in armor. Come on, like girls battle. So look at that. Look at those. Look at those shoes. I don't know how well we could walk in those, but the 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 reason that I feel like the Lord had peace be the shoes is because how much of a journey is it? if you're worried about where you're stepping, right? So I know us ladies, we rock high-heeled shoes, no doubt. Like, you girls can wear some high-heeled shoes like nobody's business. But if you're going to run a marathon, you're not wearing those heels, you know? You're probably not wearing flip-flops. Look at this girl trying to walk on her bare feet. Because instead of her battle or kind of what's in front of us, she's worried about where she's stepping, She's absolutely worried about where she puts her feet down because she doesn't have the right shoes on, because she hasn't put peace on her feet. The readiness of peace that goes with every step you take. So when you take that peace on from the Lord, you get to step out in your battle and not worry about where you're stepping because wherever you're stepping, you're trusting 
and you have that peace to go forward. And so I love that he has it be part of our armor. I love it. It's absolutely necessary. You wouldn't have be all armored up and be bare feet. And so it's very important. It's a really important part of it. And I like the first time I saw that, I was like, why did I talk about the breastplate of righteousness? Like, let's get to the feet. Let's get to the feet and the peace part. So I really, really love that. So how can we battle for peace? That's what, that's what I want to talk about today. How can we battle? Because I feel like, ladies, we're all in this battle together. We're all there together. And, we're, and we need to step out and really fight for it and fight for each other for peace. And so the first thing that I have is that you have to believe. You absolutely have to start with the foundation that Jesus has already given it to you. It's yours to take. It's yours to have. And I think I struggle with this so much. Like, I'm like, I walk in anxiety. Like, I want to walk in peace. But I don't stop and think, well, he already gave it to me. And let's look at, so let's look at the scriptures that say that. So the first scripture that we have is 1232, and it says, Do not be afraid, little flock. I love how the Lord calls us a little flock. Isn't that the greatest? Like, do not be afraid, little daughters of mine, for your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. So he's pleased to give us the kingdom. And then we move to the next scripture, and it says, For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking. I love to eat and drink. But of righteousness, peace, peace joy in the Holy Spirit. So peace is foundational in the kingdom, and it is absolutely his pleasure to give it to us. And the last scripture that he says is that in John 14, 27, he says, this is Jesus talking, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Isn't that the truth? Like their peace is not the peace we're looking for. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Is that all I have of that scripture? Yep. Um, and because he says, take heart, you know, I've already come the world. And, and so he's giving us the peace. So you have to believe that when he left, he gave the peace to us. And remember when he talked about and told his disciples to go into houses, right? And if they were welcome to stay, and if they weren't, they were to take the peace and go. It is something that you take with you. He's given it to you as a gift, and you take it with you. And so I, I think that we don't think about it as tangibly as we should. Like, it's a gift that we unwrap and we take with us. And so that's the, the first thing that you have to be in agreement with the Lord on, is you have to believe that he gave it to you. The second thing is that we have to trust in the Lord. We have to trust him. We have to trust him that no matter what it looks like, that he is working things for our good. That no matter how things happen, no matter what it is. And so um, I have to say, yeah, we'll go to the first scripture. So John 16, says, I've told you these things so that you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I've overcome the world. So he's telling us to have peace no matter what the world looks like. And it's not that easy. It's, it's not. I, I know that um, when Bloom got canceled in March, it was like we were one week away. I felt like we were just barely going to come skidding in, and we were going to do it, and we were walking in faith, and we were going to do it, and the Lord wanted us to do it, and we were doing it. And then it didn't happen. And so you have two choices. You know, you can think that, you know, the world is winning and the enemy is winning, or you can trust that even if the enemy meant something that women weren't going to come or we weren't going to have it, that the Lord was going to use it for good. And as we approached October, I found myself saying, man, there's less cases in March. We should have gone in March. And I immediately heard the Lord say, it's better in October. It's better. You have to believe it's better. Or I would have had it happen in March. And Nicole, I keep going to Nicole, and I'm sorry you were before me, but I'm going to talk about you the whole entire day. <laughs> Look at Nicole, Nicole's testimony. Look at how much more powerful it was. Look at the things she walked through that she gets to talk to us about from March to October. And it's just one example of how the Lord had big plans. We didn't have campuses in March. We didn't have all the ladies that we have watching us today. We're so grateful for his idea and how he gave us to come through. 
And it's just one little example of how we can divert and go, we got to go back to Egypt, right? We're not going to the promised land. We got to get back to Egypt. We know there was food there. We got to get back to March when we knew it was better to have bloom, where really it's not. Really, it's not because whatever's happening in your life, and I absolutely 100% believe this, and sometimes it's way harder to walk it out than all. I often try to picture myself with Jesus looking down over the path that I'm on. No matter how difficult it is, no matter what I'm facing, and I absolutely believe without a doubt I would agree to be on the same path he set me on. Without a doubt. Because he's so good because he gets to see the fruit of it, because he gets to know that even though it's so hard and it's so painful and it, it, you know, and not every walk is like that. Not every walk is like that. Thank God he's so faithful and so loving to us. But no matter what it is, we would sit with him and go, yeah, I'll take that path. I'll do it. I'll do it because it's worth it. Because he loves you so much, he wouldn't have you on that path if it wasn't worth it. He wouldn't have you there if he didn't believe that it brought the most fruit and it was the best for your life. And we don't always want to hear that or want to be with that. It's not that easy to walk beside the people that even Lisa talked about yesterday that have lost their spouses. Debbie, my heart is just to you, my friend. I can't imagine walking in your shoes. But I believe that if you stood beside Jesus, you would do the same thing. And, and I, that's the hardest thing to say. But you have to trust and believe that what he has for you is good. What he is, it's good. All right, so number, oh, did I, is, I think there's another scripture in that. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will direct your paths. I, uh, I had a time once where uh, we owned two houses and we were young and had young babies and uh, we had no business owning two homes. <laughs> we couldn't afford it. We didn't, and we had somehow, you know, how you get along a path and we had had renters in one and we were buying another and you find yourself in that and the renters said that they were leaving and I was like, you know, because we couldn't afford it and we found ourselves in the spot, you know, a spot. Have you ever been in a spot? <laughs> Have you ever been in one of those spots where you're like, whoo, I don't think I should have made the choices I made. And here I am. And it was the first time ever that I took this scripture and I said, you know what? I'm going to say this every morning instead of worrying. I'm going to say this every day, every day until I see the goodness of God in this and his plan and not mine. No matter what I know to be true in the world, no matter what it's telling me, no matter what fear is coming on me, I'm going to say this to myself every day. And it worked. (laughs) It worked. I don't own two homes anymore, so I'm not going to tell you how long I had to know. Um, And so I want to say one more scripture, and then I'll come back to that. Um, In Isaiah, it says, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. And he's talking about us, ladies, that if we keep our mind on him, we will have that peace because he is peace, because he is that. And so the third thing that we have is that um, we have to capture every thought. You have to capture every thought. You have to grab it. And that's what I was doing when I was saying that scripture over and over and over again. I was capturing any other thought that the enemy wanted to put into my mind. Like, you can't pay for two places. You are going to go financially in a bad spot. You are not going to be able to. You and you and you. And the enemy wants to just chirp in your ear the whole entire time of whatever circumstance you got. And you take a scripture and you hold on to it, and you say it over and over and over again. Because the next um, scripture says that um, we demolish arguments and every pretense that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. And the next one says in James 4, 7, you submit yourselves then to God and resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So when you choose, You choose, you step into the battle with peace on your feet, and you choose to take scripture over what the enemy is saying in your ear. You are capturing that thought, and the more you capture that thought and replace it with truth, the more the enemy flees from you, because he has no place to go. He has no place. That's exactly what Jesus did in the devil, or... (laughs) I don't know what that was. 
That's exactly what Jesus did in the desert to the devil. I just, I was trying to get short, I guess. I just combined devil and desert and there we go. Um, that's exactly what he did is that the enemy came at him like and he's showing us the perfect thing to do the enemy came at him and just like lisa said he said but but the word says but the word says but the word says and you when you are not sure of your footing and struggling and battling in peace you can stand firm on scripture you grab a scripture you know and and when you have been set free this weekend and chains have fallen off and the enemy comes at you after this, which he will, he absolutely will. He wants to make you believe you have not been freed, that you have not laid it down at the altar, that Jesus did not meet you here. He wants to convince you and go back at you like he did Nicole and say, you really don't have any peace. You really haven't been free. You are going to take scripture and say, he who the sun sets free is free indeed. Because come on, ladies. The God that we serve, the God we serve is the head and he is the tail. He is stronger than anything in this world. And that when he sets you free, you are free. And you just, every time you hear the enemy, that's the scripture you say, no, he set me free. No, he set me free. And that's how you capture the thought. I feel like um, as ladies, we look like this a lot. It's a little girl, but man, does our mind go in a bunch of places, doesn't it? It goes everywhere. And I don't, some of the images I couldn't quite like, but, but I, we think of a thousand things at one time, you know? Don't we think of a thousand things? I don't, I've, I've shared my testimony a little bit before um, and kind of how I let uh, anxiousness and worry, which I think has always kind of been uh, where I leaned at. But um, I've shared my testimony before in Bloom's past that I, uh, I let myself uh, worry all the time about losing my husband. And I, um, it started out so innocent, um, where there was a song that said, you know, I, I pray that you'd let me keep him just one more day. You know, I love that song. And I thought, well, that's a really good prayer to pray. I'm going to pray that prayer. And so that the Lord is knowing that I really love my man and I want to keep him one more day. And it started like that. And then it started, you know, every day. And then it was every week. And then it was every month. And then it was years. And I went from you know, thank you, Lord, for my husband, and I just want him one more day to, Lord, please don't take him from me. And I let anxiety and worry creep in, and I let, um, I mean, I can't tell you, and I, you don't have to share your hands, you know, so that I feel better, but I can't tell you how many times I planned his funeral when he was like two minutes late. <laughs> he wouldn't call, or, you know, he's, he has a cell phone. I'm like, what do you even have a cell phone for, you know? <laughs> But really, you know how we talked about testing, you know, you think you have peace and then the enemy and then the enemy and then the Lord comes and he's like, well, what, what about this? You know, and I call them indicators, but you can call them whatever you want, tests or trials. We think we're good. We think we got peace. And then the Lord gives us an indicator and says, well, how are you when this happens? How are you when your husband doesn't call for five minutes? For you guys, it's probably two days, but for me, <laughs> for me, it's five minutes. And, um, and how are you? You know, are you really delivered? Are, do you really have peace in that? And I didn't. I absolutely didn't. And um, it took a long battle and a long walk with the Lord to come to realize that it was the spirit of abandonment that I had clung to and agreed with and that I was just worried and stressed that I was going to be abandoned. And even though I knew deep in my heart that the Lord, if the Lord took my husband, that the Lord was going to walk through it with me, I didn't, I didn't want to walk that walk. <laughs> do you know? Have you ever said that? Lord, I know you'll be with me. I know you will. I know you'll be with me. But I don't want to do that. That's how, it's terrible. I don't want to do that. I don't want that to be my walk. But it took me actually surrendering my husband to him and actually saying then just, I, I literally cried out for a couple hours one day on my deliverance day, I'll tell you. And um, I cried out for hours. I had been sobbing. And I finally just said, then take him. Just take him. And in that very moment, the Lord showed me the lie of the enemy. It was a surrender of what I had been clinging to. And I knew that I knew in the moment of it, in the moment, that it was 
the enemy and that it was abandonment and um, and just releasing that and breaking off that chain. And has the enemy come at me still since? <laughs> yes, he has. Has my husband still not called me when he's going to be late? Yes, he has. But, but I can say to the enemy now without a doubt that I am free. And he who the sun sets free is free indeed. And the difference to me was this visual that I got that when the spirit of abandonment was with me, in, it was like in a corral, and I was in there with it. But the minute that I was free of it, recognized it, repented of it, confessed it to the Lord, laid it down, and asked for him to fill me with his peace and with his, that spirit of abandonment had to go outside the fence. It had to go outside. And so now I know that anytime it comes at me, I'm like, oh, you're not getting back in the fence. There's no way. You're not coming into this fence. You have been put on the outside. And even though I hear it sometimes chipping in my ear or I don't get a call or whatever it is, it's on the outside and there's a difference. And so ladies, when you're set free, when you know, you know, like you see the enemy and you know that he's been torturing you and tormenting you and it is not at all what the Lord has for you and confessing it before him and laying it down at his feet and asking Jesus just to come into those, it, it's all the difference in the world. It's all the difference in the world. And the Lord is just waiting to do that for you, waiting to deliver you, waiting to break off those chains. So the fourth thing that is so important, I think, is that God's perspective changes everything. It changes everything, and it brings his perfect peace. It just does. When you are in a situation that you do not understand what's happening, and it is not something that you saw coming, or maybe you even chose it, and then it's not at all what you thought it was going to be. His perspective and the reasons why he has you doing it makes all the difference in the world. And I, I feel like um, that's how Bloom kind of started. I was telling a story this morning, and um, we had gone to Women of Faith a lot of times and taken a lot of women, and they were amazing. And when we went to do it ourselves, I was like, ugh, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do it. It's so much work, and oh, I'm not going to be like that, and we're not going to have the amazing things they can do. And the Lord took me aside, and he's like, would you do it for 50 women? And I was like, well, yeah, sure. Would you do it for 20? Would you do it for 10? And then he said, would you do it for one woman? If it was changed, would you do it for one woman? And I was like, yeah, I'd do it for one woman. I would. I would. If it changes their life, if it makes them see you, Lord, if it, and it turned out to be my very sweet friend, Shallon, that had this breakthrough at our very first conference. And it made all the difference. Like, it was the Lord's perspective. It was his idea. It was his thing. And it grew into this bloom that I, nobody could ever imagine. But God's perspective is so much different than anything that we have. It makes everything worth it. Everything worth it. And so, ladies, I'm encouraging you. I want to do a couple scriptures of that, and then I guess I'll talk about that. So in Romans 12, 2, it says, Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, and then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. And then the last one that I have is Colossians 3, 2, and it said, Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. When we look to this world, and I feel like that's so been his message is that when you look to the left or to the right and the sea is coming over you and the, it just looks impossible, he wants you to keep your eyes on him, ladies, to just keep your eyes on him. And he wants the things that you do not have peace about, the things that you're hopeless in, the things that you need grace over, the things that you really need peace. And for me, it's like my whole entire walk, like my whole thing. I need peace in that and I want to claim the peace that you've given me, and I want God's perspective. And so we're gonna um, we're gonna have a special song done by this beautiful lady, and then um, we're gonna give you some time to take those things. I feel like I was telling someone else yesterday that there's there. I want to get with the Lord, and I want to do these things, but our lives seem so busy and so crazy. And even though we want them, we don't take the opportunity to spend time with the Lord and really hear from Him. And so we're going to have this song, and then we're going to go into some time. And feel free to kind of come and go. We are going to close at the end. But feel free to grab your notebook 
or do whatever, and we'll bring prayer teams up at the end too, but we want to spend some time with the Lord. We want you to take the things that you don't have peace in, and we want to um, have you, you know, write them down. We want you to ask God's perspective. We want you to ask him those things and take the time to ask him what he thinks about those things, and I promise you, I promise you, it's going to change the way you see things. It's going to change the way that you feel and the peace that you have over it. You're going to put on those shoes, girls, and you're going to armor up, and you're going to trust him, and you're going to capture those thoughts, and you are going to get God's perspective, and we are going to walk out in peace this year. 2020, bleh. And I, I, think, uh, I think there's going to be some indicators in the next month or two, you know, coming at his church, coming at his ladies, coming at us individually. There's going to be a few indicators that the Lord gives us, and we're going to have to battle up. We're going to have to put our armor on. We're going to have to fight for peace. And I just want you to know I'm going to be fighting right beside you. <laughs> I am. I'm going to be fighting for peace right beside you, so. Thank you. Thank you for letting me talk to you. Thank you for letting me talk to you about peace. <laughs>